the fuck we're doing if you want to play bloody knuckles or give me a prostate orgasm, whatever you want to do, let's have a good time. We're here to make friends. It's difficult for me to make friends. I, I can't even keep a roommate. I had this roommate and he used to have one of these uh, the iPods, like the big brick motherfuckers, you know what I mean? The old school ones. And it had 5,000 of his favorite songs, various artists. Uh, and one day he left me lying around, this took me like two hours. I wrote down each individual song and artist on a piece of paper and then I deleted all the music off of it and I uploaded 5,000 copies of Korn's Freak on a Leash. <laughs> and, then, and then I looked at the list and I renamed each individual one. <laughs> up talk to him and then he just shouts and then they act like he said some shit. It's hilarious every time. Hey, what's going on, Chewbacca? Ah! That's this fucking guy! He's always on here. I love this dude. <laughs> There's a scene in Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Lando Calrissian, he walks up to Chewbacca standing next to Han Solo. He's like, how are you doing, Chewie? You still hanging out with this loser? He's like, ah! I got friends that feel that way about me. why I fucking waste time single and shit. I do this stupid shit when I'm single, which I like to call fetish window shopping, which means that you don't do the kinky shit, you just talk to the people online about their kinky shit, just like pick their brains. Like I met this girl online, she wanted me to come over and pretend that she was a cat. Which I don't know what that means, you want me to bring a laser pointer over, <laughs> drown you in the tub. <laughs> Ensues like, get it, get it, get it, come on, take this fucking tip. Okay, I'm going to fuck you under the tool shed, sweetheart. <laughs> this is how I lose jobs all the time. Before. Look, the first job I ever had, I worked at Jack in the Box, and I got fired after two weeks because I was working the drive thru and somebody came around and they looked in the window and I handed them their food or whatever, and the guy was like, have a nice day, and I said, don't fucking tell me what to do. <laughs> Pulled around and told on me. <laughs> That's why this new job is advantageous. I work at a Jewish retirement home. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm not making that up. I wait tables at a Jewish retirement home and it's next to impossible. They can't hear anything. <laughs> well, what's your name, sweetheart? My name's Eden. Peter? Eden. Peter. No, no, it's Eden like the garden. Oh, Eden like the garden. You should say Eden like the paradise because it's paradise. No, no, Mrs. Goldberg. This is fucking paradise right here. <laughs> I do stand up, but I don't want to be famous, which is convenient. <laughs> I think the fame fucks with people's heads. Did you guys hear what happened to the lead singer of Creed? This is true. The lead singer of Creed, he lost his mind, and now he thinks that he's involved in a top secret plan to assassinate the president. <laughs> I'm not making that shit up, man. His family, they're working tirelessly night and day to get him institutionalized, but I can honestly say for the first time in my life that I would like to hear a new Creed record. <laughs> set to alternative rock. <laughs> Depository with his shirt unbuttoned, you know, waving his hair. Creed shocks fans with new direction back and to the left. <laughs> I love that shit. Right? Make fun, of, make fun of the people who get famous and then end up being idiots. They're fucking horrible. Kid Rock earlier this year. Oh, Ba with the Ba. Uh, his assistant died in a three-wheeler accident on his property, and you can find the recording online of him calling 911. It's the, he's fucking shrieking, high-pitched, losing his mind. <coughs> Best thing he ever recorded. <laughs> Make fun of him, all right? These people do horrible things to people, and then they're fucking everywhere, and the people who were victims of it got to see it. Like, think about... Bill Cosby, right? This is the worst part about it to me. 
Can you imagine what it would be like if everybody had a wacky impression of the guy that raped you? <laughs> You're just like at the office party, somebody busted out, Ah, the children! No, you gotta never do that, ever again. They shouldn't, they shouldn't even sell fudgesicles anymore. Everyone retire your Cosby impression, it's too late. Jared Fogle, Subway, that guy, child molester and his Subway, did you know that he He's not in prison anymore, he's on house arrest. That means, yeah, that means that people who are non-violent criminals are gonna spend the rest of their life in prison and this guy gets to go live in his fucking sandwich mansion. <laughs> Dude, put me in charge. I'm in favor of cruel and unusual punishment if it's appropriate for the thing that you've done. This guy's particularly heinous. This is what I say we do to Jared Fogle. We hunt him now, we find him, we make him fat again. <laughs> we just got people working shifts, force feeding them no until he's so big he has to go into his living room and pull the khakis back out of the frame. Put him back on. I can't leave the house. I'm too fat and I got a thing on my ankle. They're not letting me go anywhere. Fuck you know. I should have gotten high before I came down here. I apologize. I drink. This is the thing. I realize I'm drinking too much. This is something fucked up that happened to me. The other day I accidentally showed a barista my ID. <laughs> <laughs> Who in this room has never done cocaine one time in your life? Just a couple of people? No I'm gonna save you some time. You won't have to do it. Anyone in here who didn't raise their hand uh, is gonna back me up on this. This is what cocaine does to you. What cocaine does is it makes you wish that you had some cocaine. <laughs> I ended up doing a lot of acid for a while. I ended up getting hospitalized while I was on acid, which is great. I found a bolt on the ground and I just stared at it for 45 minutes like, Jesus God, there's medical equipment in this hospital that's missing <laughs> I wake up the next morning and the nurse comes in and she says, so how do you feel? You feel better? I'm like, oh yeah, you know, this place is significantly less terrifying, but it's daytime and you're not on LST. <laughs> and I swear to God, from across the hallway in a completely different room, I hear someone yell, I heard that! <laughs> Probably would have been fast friends if it weren't for the fact that at that moment you hear eee. And they're like, Jesus God, he's flatlining, we're gonna have to shock him! God damn it, this thing is always fucking with me. Fuck! Bolt fell out again, guys, we're gonna lose it. Alright, we'll fuck yourselves and we're gonna play.